Hey Robot Makers, do you want to make your own Stream Deck alternative using a Pico RGB keypad like this one? Then keep watching. So let's take a look at how to build this. I'm actually going to use the Pi Deck to control this presentation. So what is the Pi Deck? So it's a Stream Deck or X key alternative. It's built on the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Pimeroni Pico RGB keypad just like this one. So this costs about £22 plus £4 for the Pico plus shipping. So under $30, under £30 to create this and a bit of 3D printing as well. So this enables you to assign shortcut keys to an external keypad to be able to launch desktop apps, take screenshots, work as a numeric keypad, whatever you can imagine, whatever you can assign a keystroke to. And all the code is written in CircuitPython. So keypads and controllers, let's have a bit of a comparison. So the Premier keypad is the Stream Deck XL by Elgato, now Corsair. So each key has a small LCD colour screen on it that can display icons and text, animations, colour, all kinds of stuff. Next is the X keys, which is a large range of keypads. Uh, they have foot pedals, they have all kinds of controllers. Uh, and these are around £162, the Stream Deck being about £180 for the XL version. So both of these are really quality items, but they are quite pricey, especially compared to the deck. So we can configure this using a YAML file. The keypad.yaml is a really simple file to edit. You can see a little example there on the right hand side. Um, it's quite English so you can you can see the different sections. There's a different section for each key. So you can see each key has a name 0 to 15. Why not 116? It's a programmer thing. Um, indexes always start at 0 in computing. 0 is a number as well. It also has an on and an off hex RGB value. If you've done any CSS programming you'll know all about hex values for RGB. They usually have six characters and there, there's three groups of two. Each two characters represents a value between 0 and 255 but represented in hexadecimal which is a number between 0 and F. So FF would be the highest value 255, 0, 0 is the lowest value. So each key has two values, one that displays when it's on, one that displays when it's off and when you press a key you can have it switch between those two. So there's two effects that we can have currently. There is a pulse effect which will make the colours fade between the on and the off value and it fades really nicely and there's also a flash option where it'll just flash the colour on and off. So I've got a flash effect on one of these keys down here. Next is the command. This is the sequence of keys or shortcut that will be sent to the computer when you press one of the keys. Finally, with the button type, uh, let's just choose between a single momentary touch button or whether it's a toggle on and then toggle off. Uh, I've actually not coded that at this point, but by the time you watch this, that'll probably be in the Git repository. So colours and effects. So like I said, there is a pulse effect, there is a flash and there is no effect at all. Each key can have a unique on and off RGB value and it can pulse between those values. And you can see on the screenshot there just because it's a bit hard to see in the studio lighting the difference. And we can see there the off value, there's no colour at all. And the on value, that one is uh, if it's R, G and B, FF means full on red, 00, zero is everything else off. So we can see there we've got a nice sharp red button flashing at us. The effect that we've got there is flash. The command on this particular key is command and shift K uh, and I've got that set up to launch Keynote. So the keys themselves, let's have a look how they're actually indexed. There is actually some numbering on the keypad going from 0 to 15, but I found that they're actually not wired that way. So if you go from 0 on the top right, 1, 2, 3 down, and then 4, 5, 6 from the next column, 8, 9, 10, 11 on the next column, and then the very first column is 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'd take a screenshot of that if you're doing any configuration. It just makes editing the YAML file so much easier. Each of the colours are expressed using a red, green, and blue value. So you can just do pixels and the key number as an index like key six, for example, would be this key here. And that means we can then set the R, G and B value independently if we wish, or we can just send the hex value to that. So launching apps. So on the Mac, I've used um, a built-in application that's called Automator. And the Automator allows you to assign shortcut keys to launch an app or perform any kind of action on your Mac. And then we can have the Pydex send those shortcut key combinations to the Mac, and then the Automator will do the rest for us. So I've set up a couple of different automations. I've set up one for launching Zoom, Chrome, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, things like the screen capture. You can also do things like mute and unmute the sound. You can turn your camera on and off in Zoom all kinds of things. Now if you're a Windows user you can also use WinHotKey as well and that's free and it does exactly the same kind of thing. So let's have a look how we would do this in Automator. So if you just launch Automator you can search for it if you just do a command space and type in Automator it'll pop up there in the launch pad. When it's launched you can then create a new type of automation and we want a quick action 
I think this used to be called services on older versions of Mac OS, but it's now called quick action. So I'll click on that, choose that. And then next, what we want to do is we want to drag from the library, uh, the launch application to that little window there. And that's all that we need to do. We just need to select which application from that drop down that we want to launch. Once we've done that, we save it. We give it a name such as Microsoft Word, and then we can find that later on in our keyboard settings. So if you go to the settings system preferences panel, click on keyboard, then click on services. You'll then see at the very bottom under the general section, the names of those automations that you just created. So I've got launch keynote, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, and Microsoft Word there. And then I've assigned some shortcut keys to these trying to find a combination that's not used by any other application. So on this one, I have option, I have command, and I have the square left bracket, and that will launch Keynote. Similarly, we have option, command, and the right square bracket, that will launch Excel. And then we have one for PowerPoint, and we also have one for Word there as well. So once they've been set up, by simply pressing the, the correct key that you've assigned to that shortcut using the YAML file, uh, and we can have a look at how we can do that in a second, it will launch that particular app and it just works, it's really great. So like I said, how we then set it up in the YAML file, if we look here at the command, command S is what I've typed as the command, and that's the command button down here on the Mac. Command S on a Mac is normally save. So I've got that set as this key up here. So if I press that one, it will always save whatever application I'm in. So I can just quickly press that and I've got the application document saved. We can have a look at the other things as well in the, um, the YAML file. So you can see the on and off value there in hex. You can see the effect is none uh, and the button type is just a simple press. And these are some of the keys that we have um, assigned in our library of things that we can do. So the escape button is called escape all in upper caps. We have tab, we have shift. That's the control key. That's the option key and that's the command key. Uh, and then we've got a space as well. And all the numbers and letters are what you would expect as well. Now they're actually all stored in a key.py uh, and we have a number of other files as well that we need to copy across to the CircuitPython device that we're running this on. So code.py is the main program. Remember circuit.py uses code.py instead of main.py or boot.py. We have uh, keypad.yaml, that's the keypad configuration file, which is what we looked at uh, in the previous slide. There is a qd underscore yaml.py and that's the quick and dirty yaml parser that I put together so that it could read yaml files because I couldn't find one uh, for CircuitPython or MicroPython. It's not fully yaml compliant, but it's good enough for what we need. And then finally we have key.py, which is the key class that just represents each one of these keys. It can have lots of different values and functions that we can use to represent uh, each key. So let's take a look at this in action. So over here on the bench, I have the, the Pi deck all set up. It's not actually running any code at the moment. We'll see when it comes to life and all the buttons start flashing and so on. And I've also got um, Thonny running on my desktop here so that we can actually try some of the code out. So I've got code.py loaded up. Um, I'm going to just click on the run button. Let me just stop that and then restart it. So it's down running the code. I can see it says Pi Deck down there in the little console and I can see that it's uh, it's flashing away. There's a little blue button there. What I'm going to do, I'm also going to switch off the overhead light on there so we can see the colours uh, a little bit easier. So you can see there the red button at the bottom right, that's using the flash effect, whereas these are the buttons on the top here, which I've got for Excel, Word and PowerPoint. These are all slowly fading in and out using the pulse. Uh, they're not going to 100% black. Uh, they're just going to kind of a 50% of the full color value for each of the keys, which is green, blue and red. The keys down here uh, are arrow keys. So I've got them as a kind of up, down, left and right configuration. And some of these buttons also have uh, a function as well. So let's quickly take a look at how to edit this YAML file. So I'm going to stop the program running first of all just by hitting the stop button and I'm going to go over to the keypad.yaml file so we can see all the different buttons that we have down here. So currently I have, let's find one that isn't currently used. Button five doesn't like being used so that's this button here and I'm going to edit this button so that when we press it um, it returns hello. So what we will do um, on that command where we've got the uh, the keys that we want to type in there we can simply type anything we want like the word hello and it will send each of those keys to the keyboard uh, we can choose what kind of colors we want to have so when it's off we might actually want it to be fully lit up so let's make it ff 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 and when you press the button let's make it so that it's um yellow so ff ff zero zero 
Uh, we're not going to have any kind of pulse effect this time round. We're just going to have the command hello. So let's save that. I'm going to create a new file uh, because when we press that button, it will send it. And if you're in your editor, it will send it and overwrite some of your code. So before we load the code, we need to make sure that we copy that new YAML file over to our CircuitPython device. I'm going to right click and send to the device. And it just says it's not overwrite it. Is that fine? Yes, it is. Now we can go and run that code again. We can go over to our new document. We can click in that window there. If I press that button now, it says it's sending hello. Uh, however, our code doesn't know, understand how to send the word hello. So what we'll have to do is space out each of the characters one at a time. So we let's go back to our keypad file, stop the code. Let's put a space in between each of these. Let's save that and then send it to our CircuitPython device. Let's click OK and then let's run the code again. Go back to our blank document and press the button. So it's saying hello. Interestingly, it's only sending one of the L's because it sent an L, the L is in the buffer. It isn't sending an extra L. <laughs> There's actually a special command for sending full text strings in the CircuitPython library. And what I'm doing is essentially just emulating key presses and then sending those key presses. And then after that loop, sending a release all. And that's why we're not getting that double L. So if that's something that you want to do, we can do that. We just have to use a different function for that. But we can see that this is very configurable. It's very easy to edit the YAML file, change whatever settings we want to have, and then we can use it day to day as one of our daily drivers. And if you look on here, these buttons I've got marked as yellow, I've got these set up as left arrow, right arrow, and if we just do some text on that, we can do up and we can do down. We can edit our text just like it's a, a keypad. And then if we want to save the file, we can press the button and it'll say where do you want to save it to. And that's all using our Pi Deck. Okay, so we're over here on my desktop, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the Excel button. I'm going to hold it up so you can see it here. So this button here is my Excel launcher. And if I press that, it will then launch Excel. If I press PowerPoint, it's going to launch PowerPoint. And if I, sorry, Word, if I press that button there, it will also launch PowerPoint. So I hope you enjoyed this short video uh, and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.